Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com. Welcome to another Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique. And right before we jump into this critique, if you haven't signed up for the Frono's Photo email list, you can do so over on the website. Look for this orange box or click the thing that says click me right here. Uh, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will not only send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, but over the next couple of weeks, you'll receive some really awesome free information via email. So let's get in. To, to the rapid fire critique. I'm gonna get all up in that. I'm gonna get all up in this rapid fire critique. That's what we're gonna do. We've got Jesse Childress. He is shooting with this one, says Nikon D200, 7200, 2.8. This photo was taken at ISO 200, 1 100th of a second at F, 2.8 at 120 millimeters. Doesn't this just pop? Now it's cropped. I'm gonna tell you that it's cropped because I can see that it's just cropped right off of here. I got that feeling, but the eyes are popping extremely well. The color, the tones, everything is nice and smooth. The hairline, this kid's got a great hairline. I really, I, he's got his widow's peak going. But this is really nice, it's soft. But when I say soft, I don't mean that the eyes are out of focus because this eye is so far in focus at 2.8 uh, and the nose has a little bit of focus there and it just looks good. I'd be interested to see why it was cropped in the first place, but this is a solid little portrait and it's going to make somebody very happy to see. So we've got this guy. He's like, hi, I'm going to hold my coffee cup just like this. Now the focus is very nice. What are we at here again? We're at 2.8 ISO 400 D200. Again, a little bit of an older camera, so not bad at all. I like what's going on here. I like that there's no reflections in the glasses, but you can see the reflection in the eyes. Because look how bright and white it is over here. You have a lot of natural light coming in through these windows. The color's cool. I don't mind it. I don't know uh, even know if I would say that black and white would be better. Uh, I, I feel it. I think this is a nice little environmental portrait that would be very nice as part of a photo story. I say that often, but yes, as a photo story. All right, we got somebody else sitting there watching. We've got the binoculars sitting here. We've got whatever this stuff is. We've got whatever that is, some books with this gentleman, and we've got this boat and the windows. This is very nicely done. I really like the feel of what's going on here as part of a larger photo story. This would really give a nice feel for where they are and what they're doing and, and who this person is. Again, I like the fact that there's no reflections on the glasses. That looks good. The eyes are cool. Black and white could look cool with this, too. I'd, I'd like to see that, but this looks really, really good. So nice job right there. Same camera. Yerp. Moving forward, now we've got a portrait of this gentleman. This time we're using a flash. It says no flash, but look at that flash right in the eyes. There's something right in the eyes. Could be just an off-camera light. It could be continuous light. This is fine. Um... My feeling here is that the face and everything is nicely exposed. Again, no reflections in the glasses. I like that. I just, and a little hot on the forehead, no big deal. I don't really care too much about that stuff like that. But it just feels like a tighter headshot would be apropos. So maybe you cut right above this neckline, you know, right here to here to here, just leaving a little bit of headroom because. You don't get anything out of the shoulders or the shirt. There's nothing here with this jacket that in integrally or is imperative to the image. It doesn't need to be there. So I think tighter for a headshot like this, especially this guy, I think he looks solid. He looks strong. It would look good. Now, if there was something here on the shirt, like a logo for a business, then yes. In this case, we got to go tighter for this headshot, and I think that will be much better. Okay, as part of the story, cool, but... I think what the okay, we got a strong ass backlight, very very strong ass backlight. Um, one two fiftieth of a second ISO one hundred. We're using some kind of light filling in the face or a reflector, but you see how you have the glowy McLoerson around them? It's like they're in cocoon. That's not going to work. I think what would save the image because it's very goldy on her face and goldy on his face. I think black and white would save this. I don't like this glow stuff around the edges that just looks like uh, it just looks like a filter that didn't work i don't mind i love the composition and i like the image that's going on here maybe a little up a little higher so we're not cutting off fully at the ankles that's just nitpicking and i don't want to nitpick i think black and white would actually save this image and not be so glowy mclowerson right there but i do like what's going on um not at all so this is a nicer it's tighter but i want to see more of the headroom personally but i don't like the lighting on the face and i don't like the look that's going on here it just doesn't it just doesn't 
it just doesn't come across too well in my opinion, so I don't like that that much. This is cool. It's got that greenish tint to, to, tint to it that's added after the fact in post because they didn't want the color. They didn't quite want the black and white, so that's why they went this green color. I love the soft flow of the ocean going on here with the paddle border not centered. Works well with the waves right here coming in so that you have some dimension. You have different heights from this height to that is lower to this is higher. So that works out pretty well. I like it. Nice job. This works. You know, I, I've said before I'm not a major landscape fan, but as part of a story, this does work. It's not the most extraordinary uh, landscape in the history of landscapes, but it serves its purpose, and it tells about the location, and I think it works pretty well. I like this. There's something about this, and I think this is the color that works really. Look at all of the rolling waves. Taken April 20th, 2014. Love the rolling waves. This is a beautiful, just a beautiful image. It would make for a great backdrop on a computer. Just make for a great metal aluminized print that Adorama Pix makes. It just feels like a really solid image. I just, I love it. It's like it's the desert, but it's the ocean. That's right. It's not the desert. It's the ocean. And this, I believe, is the last frame. Highly pixelated. Highly, that's because we're cropped majorly. You see what's going on with all this noise? And that's at ISO 200. You see what happens when you crop that much? You're going to get that. So as part of a cityscape, it's fine. Oh, it's Seattle. Obviously, that's the Space Needle. Um, uh, I almost said get a little closer because you could cut the Space Needle, you know, do it about here, the frame, and about here. But I see they're going for a panoramic image. But this is what happens when you crop that heavily is you lose the quality um, black, I mean, this is Seattle, so you got all these rain clouds. Maybe trying to do something a little more on the black and white side could work. It tells a nice story, but I'm not feeling the grain and the noise so much at 200 ISO because of the crop and everything like that. But the framing, composition, pretty cool. Don't mind it at all. Uh, that's what I have to say about that. So back to the front here for the rapid fire critique from Jesse Childress. Uh, nice job. I think there's some solid, solid keepers in here. Well, obviously, my favorite one is this one right here with the ocean. Um, but I love that the, your focus is spot on. You're using an older camera. It shows, again, that you can do it with anything. Yes, it was a fantastic camera for the time. It's still good. It's obviously not as good with the high ISOs. But very, very solid set here. I got a feeling from just about all these images, except for this one down here of this portrait, I think all of them work except for this portrait down here. Again, my opinion on the rapid fire critique, that is my take on it. You may have a different take, but that's what critiques are all about. You ask people for their opinions, and then you formulate your own based off of what you think about the images. So that is another Adorama Picks rapid fire critique please submit yours over at fronosphoto.com under submit and there's a rapid fire critique thing there so there you have it jared poland fronosphoto.com see ya if you like the adorama picks rapid fire critiques go ahead click up on the screen there is a playlist that you can go get more rapid fire critiques from just so that you can get more rapid fire critiques from and don't forget, subscribe here on the screen on YouTube. That's going to get you, uh, I don't know what it gets you. It gets you to be a subscriber. And I say thank you. So there you have it. Enjoy.